Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up to the book of Romans, the book of Romans. We are in chapter six and uh, we're going to pick it up in verse five. And we're in this section of scripture where Paul is talking to us about how we are now dead to sin, but we're now alive to God, right? And I think sometimes one of the things that God wants us to learn in the book of Romans is I think sometimes we think there's something we have to do to make ourselves dead to sin. And there's something we have to do to make ourselves alive to God. But really what Romans is, and really from chapters 1 uh, through chapter 11, Paul is giving us doctrine. All of Paul's books, and Paul the Apostle, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. All of Paul's books, he always puts doctrine before duty, right? So doctrine, what God has done for us, what God's Word says about us, the promises that God's Word gives to us, we need to learn those things and we need to realize if God says it, it's money in the bank. God's checks will never bounce. And because we are, you know, this is who we are in Christ, because we're dead to sin but alive to God, Paul will then take us to chapter 12 through the end of the book and say this is what we do in response to those things. So chapter 6, verse 5, for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, what does that mean? Listen, when you are saved, what happens is you realize that on the cross of Calvary, right, at Golgotha, when Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, was hanging on that Roman cross outside of the walls of Jerusalem, right, you realize he wasn't just there as a martyr, but he was God in human form, dying for the sins of the world, but not just dying for the sins of the world generically, but he was dying for your sins and my sins. So how are we united in his death? We realize that when Jesus was on that cross, we we were there too, in essence. He was there dying for your sins and my sins, right? And that's how we're united in the likeness of his death. Certainly, it says we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. So if we, if we realize he died in our place, he died for our sins, we'll also realize we've raised with him as well. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin, listen, might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. So we were crucified with him. If our old man was dying with him on the cross and then he was buried and then we rose with him also from the dead, right? We have this newness of life Paul was just talking to us about in verse 4. Well, then what we realize is that, we, that, that uh, the body of sin might be done away with. We should no longer be slaves of sin. We're no longer slaves of sin. You know, there's people in this world that they say, well, I'm free, you're a Christian now, and you can't do anything fun, and th this is Christianity. It's just not true. You know, I've said to those folks, I said, well, listen, why don't you this next week, you know, you know, don't go out drinking, right? Don't go out partying, you know, don't do any of those, those things that you say you're so free to do. I want you to see how free you are, because what you don't realize is you're actually a slave to those things. You're a slave. That's your master. I've said it before, and I'm sure I'll say it many more times. Listen, the key to life is actually finding the right master. And Jesus Christ is, is our Lord. He's our Savior. He's the right master. He's the one that loves us, that serves us. And people think, well, I'm not under any master. That's not true. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Before you're set free by Jesus, those are your masters. The world, the culture, the world system, your own flesh, this body of death that is going in an opposite direction of God, and the devil himself, man, he's pulling the strings. He's like the puppet master behind it all. And the Bible tells us here, we should no longer be slaves of sin. Verse 7, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Verse 8, now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Verse 8, knowing that Christ having been raised from the dead, dies no more, right? Death no longer has dominion over him. Jesus Christ died once, death no longer has dominion over him. That was it. Verse 10, for the death that he died, he died to sins once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Verse 11, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves, it's almost like a Southern word, I reckon, right? Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. So I reckon I'm dead to sin. Sin no longer has reign over me. I died with Jesus. 
I'm not a slave to sin any longer. Reckon yourselves to be dead to sin. <coughs> Excuse me. But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Reckon that today. Reckon that you are dead to sin. But you're alive to God through Christ Jesus. You are alive to God through Christ Jesus today. You are free in Christ. The Bible says, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And you are free from the greatest tyrant of all. And that's sin itself. Rebellion against God. You're born again. You're alive to God. And it's not something you have to work for. It's something you need to yield to. You need to let the Spirit of God lead you right to the, the feet of Jesus. Knowing you're, you're right with Him today. Father, bless us with this knowledge today. May we reckon ourselves dead to sin but alive to you today in Jesus' name. Amen.